Not too long ago, bookstores were a neighborhood staple. They were small and friendly, or large and easy to find. Print books were booming. Then, well, we all know the story, we went from paper to screens. Bookstores became a relic. Would they ever survive? Spoiler alert, yes they would. There's a resurgence of print, to the point where one bookstore in New York is kind of a tourist destination. We're about to find out the best and worst parts of managing this iconic New York City landmark. I'm meeting Tony Walker, a manager and events planner at the legendary Strand Bookstore. After a day of helping thousands of book lovers who come through that door, he's taking me to his favorite place to get burgers in Harlem. We're heading uptown to Harlem Public. This is Tony's go-to spot for the best burger in the neighborhood. Their sassy menu features items like the Daddy Mac and the Fat Ass Wedge. But Tony brought me here for a reason. so. Let's go get those patties. So welcome to beautiful Harlem. What's your favorite part about living in Hamilton Heights? I like the people mm. a lot up here. I like, I mean, it's it's rainy today, but usually like up until it's just like too cold and people can't, there's a lot of sort of like traffic on the street. I like that, that it's sort of like vibrant. You like know people in the neighborhood. There's a lot of stuff to do, but there's like, there's the liquor store, there's the place that serves burgers, there's the noodle shop, there's the Dunkin' Donuts, that sort of thing. So I see a lot of people around that I know. I don't know, I just, I've always liked it up here. I really like coming here for the burgers. I think they have the best burgers in this neighborhood. Harlem Public, they don't do delivery. So you actually have to come here to, to get them. And then they own a bar next door called At The Wallace as well. Okay. But At The Wallace doesn't serve burgers, so you have to come here for them. Ooh. So that's why it's always so crowded, basically, because you, you have to eat here. I wanted to kind of highlight what they have on their burger menu. Okay. It's not available on brunch days. Mm -hmm. So if it's Saturday or Sunday brunch time, mm -hmm. they don't offer burgers. Okay. Um, you have to wait until the dinner menu comes. Here we have the Parmesan crusted burger. Okay. Uh, you can see that it's built with a very crusted bread on yes. top. I'm excited about that. Tots come with it. Um, you can order any side, but this one, we got tots. Okay. Over there, we have the peanut butter burger. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've had that one before. You have? Mm hmm Kind of thought maybe you'd be like grossed out, but forget <laughs> it. Over here, we have the wake and bake mm -hmm. burger, and it has an egg on it, because it's and like, like tater tots on it. On ciabatta. Tater tots underneath, yeah. yeah. And what it's on bacon? ciabatta. It's got bacon on it too. Yes. Okay. And I think it's sweet bacon. Okay. Some sweetness on there. Good. And then we sweet know potato fries. We do ha have a shared love of bacon. Yeah. I'm ready to eat these burgers. Yeah, let's eat. All right, Put which one do you want to try? First? They're going to be so good. Burger meat, burger meat, burger meat. <laughs> yeah, disgusting. <laughs> let's eat that one first. Okay, let's cut it in half and then we can eat it at the same time. Okay. Stare at each other while we eat it and decide how we feel. Yeah, but we have to look directly in each other's eyes the whole time that we're eating it. Right. With no emotion. No emotion? At all, no, no emotion. All right, um, mm. we can bake. You don't like I, it? I don't like staring contests. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the burger? Yeah, it's really good. The bacon is good. They do like a nice burger mixture. They do. We're gonna keep eating those, but so I that's wanna try and bake, wake and, that's the wake and, and bake. bake. That one probably would was my initial like, oh, definitely that one. Mm -hmm. Um as one of the managers at the strand, right. uh, you tend to coordinate events. Who are you the most happy to have met from one of these oh, events? My favorite person that I've ever met was Jennifer Lewis. For people who don't know who Jennifer Lewis is, she's well been in like 
80 movies, and she just released a biography. It came out last year in hardcover, and she was like very nice, very personable with her fans. It was like one of the few moments that I was sort of star starstruck. And then the other time was when I met Hillary Clinton, and and Chelsea was there. Chelsea's great too. Um, but meeting Hillary, it was after the 2016 campaign. She and Chelsea wrote a book together called like It Takes a Village. I think it was It Takes a Village. But it was like really great to meet like sort of a personal hero and it was very serious. Like her, her protection, you had to get like scanned before you came in and like leave all your bags and take off your coat and everything. And then they had to like block off so that there was no line of sight to her at all as well. Actually the Secret Service gives you these like pins that you have to wear that allow you to like get into certain areas. Is it like and a I, GPS tracker? I, well it could, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's like you like clip it on you and I lost mine oh God. somewhere <laughs> in the street. Um, and they like had to send guys out to like try to find it. They didn't up finding it but oh. it's very interesting this is the parmesan crusted and this crust is serious cut it like in half and then cut it that half like cut half into half because i don't want a lot of it this one's big you're are you mad because i'm yeah. directing you I'm on how to cut the burger you because you're Holy you're used I'm... to this <laughs> you're not doing it right even if you're doing it right <laughs> What kind of sauce is on that? Is this like Thousand Island? Type? I believe it is. Okay. Yes. I'm a very picky eater. Oh, there's like little, what are these? Pickled red onion. Mmm. <clears throat> mmm. The onion is good. I like pickled things. Me too. And the Parmesan like wrapped on top, the best part. Tony. Uh -huh. Allie. You've been in the retail book industry for 50 years. <laughs> yeah. What I is have. what is your least favorite type of customer that you get? Oh my god. Um usually men. And usually like men that like think they know what they're talking about and don't know what the fuck they're talking about are my least favorite type of customer. I also really don't like customers who are mean to my staff. I don't tolerate, I, like, I don't do that at all. People don't get to pay enough money for somebody to go to a store and like be mean to them because like you're having a bad day. So that would be my least favorite type of customer. I don't like children very much. What's the best part of your job? That's a hard <laughs> question. But I think the special events part is, is my favorite part. So people can rent the store, rent space in the store for like filming, for to get married or a bat mitzvah or you know they want to debut their play there or we've done workshops for um, plays there. There's a couple of Broadway shows that have done um, like promo events and I enjoy those a lot. Um, we do fashion shows usually every year during fashion week and I like that you get to meet a lot of different people from like sort of the entertainment industry if you will. Every event is very different. Um, I can tell you is, right now, the peanut butter one was my last choice, but I'm excited about it. It's good. I think you'll like it. All right, Tony. Okay. This is the peanut butter burger. Cut it in half again. All right, I forgot. This one is very firm. Is it? It is. Very but firm it, one. That one was a particularly juicy... It was. The Parmesan crusted had a lot more going on also. It had like many different layers, so it's harder to cut through. Yeah. This one's just firm feeling, and I don't think it has that many components, okay. but I'm interested to know what you think. Okay. A peanut butter burger is not your average burger. Look at that. Look at all those juices. Oh, yeah. Zoom in on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't you kind of wish I had a little more peanut butter on it almost? You don't like it? I didn't say that! <laughs> I don't hate it. Okay, but... I'm also not disgusted by it. Okay, but... You don't like it. No, I like it. I like it. I like th I like this burger. It's a good one. No, <laughs> you don't. Stop lying, bitch. It's not bad. <laughs> Why are you lying? <laughs> that bite was actually really good, though. I feel like the second bite is better than the first bite. It's saltier. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think. What? I would like it more mm -hmm. if they added some other flavors in there. Like what? So 
I would not be upset if they added some like Asian inspiration into this. Peanut butter is can be tricky distinct. to pair with. Yeah. And it can be very overpowering. Even this, the peanut butter is the predominant flavor in this right now. It is. Well, eat the rest. I will. <laughs> I'm not gonna turn it away. It has bacon on it. <laughs> okay, when you normally come here on mm -hmm. your own, you finished work mm -hmm. and you're tired of people mm -hmm. and you want something from here, what do you get? Well, I can't come here if I'm tired of people because it's usually very crowded. Okay. Um, and not like in a bad way, but it's like they're it's popular. Yeah. So there are people here. So what I really like is I like to build my own burger. And I just like a really classic burger. So just like cheese, bacon, lettuce, tomato. I like a burger with mayo on it usually. Um, and, or the crab cake burger is really good. With the advent of ebooks coming out, the internet in general as entertainment, mm -hmm. and the fall of a lot of big box bookstores, do you think that written paper books are relevant anymore to American culture? Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Statistically, only something like between 13 and 20% of the population actually use, like, reads ebooks, and the percentage of people hasn't really increased over the past several years. They've sort of saturated their market or people that are going to convert to that way of consuming books. So most bookstores have closed because it's more expensive to keep a store open and then there's not a lot of potential for profit on actual books, but broadly people are reading sort of the same amount that they've sort of always read and they're still consuming paper, you know, actual books. There's certainly, you know, years where you have something that drives traffic. So like two years ago, I guess, J.K. Rowling released The Cursed Child. So that, you know, made a lot of money. Or, you know, when Fifty Shades of Grey was out, that was something that was certainly like driving a lot of sales to the store. Um, if there's ever another George R.R. Martin book, that's going to be huge. How long ago did you come to New York? Twelve years ago. Oh, I can't, oh I, that's I right. arrived. I made my entry you made a into New York. That's what yeah. your bio on the no strand lube, says. No <laughs> just spit, shoved it in, like broke back mountain in 2007. Oh my I gosh. drove across the George Washington Bridge, which is just up the street. We drove from Florida. We stopped in Maryland. Um, my roommate and I stopped in Maryland at uh, an aunt's place and stayed the night. We only slept for like five hours and then we drove here the next morning and we moved into our place that didn't have windows. What? There were no windows and it was February 1st, so it was cold as fuck. So you're and glad there weren't have windows. windows. <laughs> and they, but like the guys like immediately showed up and started and like put them in, but like we walked in and we were like, what the fuck, there's no windows in here. But wow. they, put the, they put in the windows before they ended the it. That's a strange story. <laughs> it was weird, yeah. All right, so you've been in New York for 12 years now. Almost are you, 13. Are you happy you came? Oh my God, yes. Oh. Absolutely. I still love it here. I imagine I will probably live here until I, you know, until the day finally you die. stumble home drunk, too drunk, and just fall onto the ground and take one last breath. Uh, would you recommend to a person who's never lived here before to come and move over? Yes, but that's like qualified, I guess. So I shall explain. Uh, <laughs> I would tell someone to move here if they like wanted to be sort of slightly abused for a year or two uh, by like nothing in particular, but sort of everything in particular. Um, so like the city comes at you hard, you know, when you when you first move here, it, like smells terrible, like, oh my God, nothing can prepare you for the smell of like hot New York City. The trains can be a nightmare for new people, you know, but I would still encourage people to move here. It's wonderful, but you have to like make the city work for you. You can't like let it fuck you because it will fuck you if you let it. So don't let it. Yeah, don't let it. Unless you want don't it let to. the city fuck you. <laughs> so as it turns out, with a city as ever changing as New York, there are three things that you can depend on. The fact that technology cannot kill everything. The promise of great neighborhood bars like Harlem Public. And that fresh faces are always welcome in New York. Um, but that yes, was... move here, move here. Just don't move to my neighborhood. <laughs>